Welcome to Acare Collab on Stanhopia Acidensis. Thank you so much for being here. I am filming my clip today on the 21st of July, and then I will finish the video off a little bit further down the line because as a care collab, I don't want to be appear like I'm cheating when the video airs and you will see what my Stanhopia looks like at that point in time. And the reason I'm doing this is because I'm teaming up today with Fernanda Nascimento Orchids and Succulents and Hillbilly Orchids and Stanhopia Blooms have a very, very short lifespan. Now, as you can see, mine is in bloom and I have another spike down there. Uh, yes, it's all very, very complicated to film this orchid. So I have a lot of photography to go with the commentary. Because of the short lifespan of these blooms and because this orchid is something to behold, I'm going to make an exception in my own personal rule and bring a clip forward because by the time this video airs, this is going to be over. Actually, within three days, this is going to be over. Fernanda Nascimento Orchids and Succulents has a piece of this Stanhopia acidensis and her spikes are also developing beautifully, but they are a little bit further behind. I think it is well worth making an exception to the rule here so that mine can also be in bloom during the care collab. Another reason I really wanted to film today because we are bang on 21st of July to when I made a video about this orchid in 2021, also on the 21st of July. So speaking of being a reliable bloomer, Stanhopia acidensis is it. There will also be images going through with dates according to the progress of this orchid since she came into my collection. I didn't really have a decent ID for this orchid when I bought her. I wanted a Stanhopia. I wanted to give this genus a go. So thank you to Michael McCarthy for providing me with the ID when she bloomed the first time for me last year. Imagine having two of these in the blooming alley last year. <laughs> it was a delicate maneuver. The basket is 30 by 30, which beautifully brings me to the topic of my setup. You might be wondering what is going on here. Well, the basket itself is 30 by 30. I bought it at a garden center and I recommissioned it for whatever purpose this usually would serve for. I recommissioned it to become my Stanhopia basket. What I did as well was put an extractor fan filter material as the media to simulate sphagnum moss. The basket itself is also very, very shallow, hoping that anything that this orchid would throw out would have absolutely no difficulty finding its way through the large square mesh wire as well. <laughs> well, Stanhopia acidensis, lovingly called Stan the Man, has different ideas and for that reason, the bud that you see on the bottom corner of the basket is probably not going to open up. It's just going to deteriorate in that corner. Throughout the process of watching the spike grow out of the top, I already knew there was gonna be difficulties to get these blooms to bloom properly. The thing is, do not touch the spikes of your Stanhopias when they just emerge. There is a point in time when they are not that delicate anymore. But if you see a spike forming and you want to start guiding it into a specific direction that you can see is more conducive for a beautiful flowering display, you touch that spike and start to try and guide it, it's going to fail. That is what I experienced last year on all I was trying to do was move away some of the extractor fan material just so that the spike wouldn't get caught in it as it was gonna come down through the bottom of the basket and promptly that spike just failed. It's almost like it just rotted out because of a single touch. So I was watching this spike with a little bit of trepidation and sadness, but you know what? It is what it is. I had another spike coming down properly through the basket as Stanhopias should. Eventually, however, once the buds were really, really quetched up against the mesh, they felt like solid hard golf balls. So I waited a couple of more days to see if the peduncles of the blooms would give me a little bit more flex as they started to get longer and longer. And they did. I managed to remove the first two buds out of the corner of the basket and prop them up over the edge. There is no hope for the third bud down there. But I can assure you that either way, I have a magnificent, intense, 
cinnamon fragrance in my blooming alley and let me just say that whole fragrance permeates the entire patio from east to west depending on how the wind blows even when i'm inside in the kitchen or sitting at my desk this fragrance really is so intense so beautiful so delicious it actually knocks my flip-flops off <laughs> what a beautiful fragrance if you like cinnamon if you like a lot of cinnamon if you like big red chewing gum this is a powerful fragrance and to be growing outdoors to have this fragrance everywhere you just know your stanhopia is in bloom <laughs> and it's such a wonderful feeling because you're always reminded go back have a look at the blooms maybe even take some more pictures because you know you never know if you've got enough pictures of this bloom and in three days it's going to be gone these blooms are a day and a half old once they start to open up it goes very very quickly and you really have to be on top of things they have a very waxy texture to them the column and the protruding lip around the bottom is so strong and plastic in its texture you feel like it is fake it has a waxy slippery feel to it without being slimy absolutely incredible the whole detail the structure and well the fragrance so you're probably wondering why i've got this hob filter material as opposed to you know the classic bark mix with sphagnum moss and big wide open baskets that is because of my previous setup where i thought stan hopiers are beasts they are and that they can penetrate through anything to get their spikes to bloom and i put lava rock in at the base and then surrounded my orchid with live moss pillows which was really great for the growing of the orchid but the orchid never bloomed until in 2020 i realized i got to do something because the growth habit of this orchid is beast mode unless it's resting and preparing to spike beast mode meaning in my first year i doubled the size of the orchid in my second year the size of this orchid tripled in my third year i had to intervene i divided the orchid i saw how many spikes had tried to grow in the interim that didn't make it through the base and that is where i put her into these very open airy basket with lots of mesh and space to avoid what we are seeing right now and used hob filter material which I can pull away and it is inorganic. It is never going to rot out on me. The whole environment that this orchid is creating for itself is self-grown. It lifts itself up as it grows bigger. Also a reason why my spikes did not have a chance to pull through in the previous setup because it was lifting itself higher and higher and the spikes had a longer way to go to get through and then grow out pendently that is at least what i discovered back in the day when i took this orchid apart and boy let me tell you that was a four hour job i actually made two part video of that because oh my goodness i was shattered afterwards i'll link those in the description if you want to see the complete decimation of my stanhopia and how <laughs> i wedged her over the corner of the patio table and just with brutal force push down to finally break her apart speaking of which all the spiky little roots that are on top my goodness careful with your hands those are like needles they will also stop growing if you touch them but why would you want to touch something that is going to poke you so hard it is painful you would need to wear gloves i didn't wear gloves i didn't know what i was getting myself into so you see my setup is for permanent stanhopia acidensis takeover do not move do not bother whatever grows how it grows it's gonna have to find its way and judging by the characteristic of this orchid's growth habit it's gonna find its way see or see how successful the blooming is gonna be as we move forward remains to be seen we already see one example that we are having some issues with regards to how close the spike gets to the mesh basket so let's go into how i take care of this orchid and where it lives now during the summer months or the warmest months of the year it's up on the east side underneath an alcove that is an overhang from the floor upstairs and there it gets a lot of airflow that's what stanhopia is like it gets a lot of light but in the morning and so far i'm not seeing any stress on the leaves thank goodness because they will burn if they have direct sun on them for too long and it gets too warm during the day luckily during the warmest months of the year that alcove gets hit with direct sun only in the morning and as the sun rises up in the sky we are in shade very very quickly while the rest of the east side 
is still in full sun. Once the temperatures get a little bit milder, I do put Stan on a stand <laughs> and I move him around the patio as and where I can access him. That is only going to be very, very limited because the more growth that he is going to grow at the bottom of the basket is going to minimize the opportunities that I have to maneuver those growths onto the stand and through the loop so that they don't get fetched. And also because of the light levels, I can increase the light levels based on where I can place the stand around the patio, meaning it's in full bright shade, never a lick of sun, but the light is so much higher and much more consistent as we head into fall and winter. And also because I can monitor how this orchid grows its growth. This orchid cannot go dry when in active growth, which is already starting now. So even though the orchid is in bloom, active growths are already popping up through the moss that you see in the basket. And this orchid needs water constantly. It cannot dry out, otherwise the leaves will start to curl or they'll get some of that rippling effect right at the tip that you cannot grow out. Once they're there, they're there permanently. The rest of the leaf will then grow really well when you've realized it still needs more water than you're giving it. And having it at eye level is so much easier because I can just walk by with a pitcher of plain water just to keep it wet. Now that it is hanging where it is for the time being in my blooming alley or up on the east side under the alcove, I actually just go with my sprayer and I missed a lot because I don't want to have anything within that mountain of moss ever dry out. I want it to stay damp. If it starts to drip in the mornings, that's fine. The rest of the day when I go to mist, all I want to do is maintain a form of dampness. So my main watering is in the mornings and I mist as a form of my main watering because whatever is happening on the top, if I went in with my pitcher and plain water, it wouldn't absorb anything. It would just pour right over the orchid and you would have the impression you've just given it a big good drink and at the end of the day the whole thing just spilt out over the orchid and nothing penetrated into the structure, into the whole infrastructure that is within this basket. So misting gives a fantastic effect of saturation and then afterwards once it is saturated that's when I go in with 300 parts per million of fertilizer once a day and remember this is active growth 300 parts per million of fertilizer once a day and that is absolutely no problem there is no salt buildup in that basket because of the amount of misting i do during the day following that 300 parts per million and trust me this orchid is hungry so you can imagine that it is absolutely taking in 300 every single day during active growth until the growths mature i'm anticipating probably about four to five new growths on this orchid this year and those growths need to grow lush and strong she will be in active growth until approximately october and it is possible that in the interim she's going to throw out two or three more new growths as straggler new growths and those need to be cultivated as well so not only is she a big orchid but she needs to have all that sustenance to support her calcium and magnesium is something that i add only when i have a bucket available because all the other orchids are getting it i am not dosing extra calcium and magnesium on this orchid because of her size it's just something that she gets once a month not because i think she needs it but because i have it on hand and that's what i give her if a fertilizer has calcium and magnesium in it and mine does and i'm fertilizing every single day supplementation it's not really that necessary but anyway it does get calcium and magnesium just because that's what's on the menu and i am not putting in calcium magnesium and then fertilizer it's more of a sporadic application and i think it's only fair to say that of course this is a mature stanhopia when she was smaller and a seedling i did supplement with calcium and magnesium just to get her started on a rhythm and a schedule that i have going usually seedlings need a lot more care and a lot more more supplementation so that they start to grow healthy and strong growths without using up any of the energy in the storage organs that the organ already has you don't want that to happen so you do supplement a little bit more often with calcium and magnesium if a stanhopia is a seedling but from a mature stanhopia point of view fertilizing every day it's just going to grow perfectly and fine there's something to also be said about the new growth and spike growth. They look the same in the early stages. 
So just don't touch anything. <laughs> That's just an add-on. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier. Just don't touch anything that comes out of the orchid. However, once your orchid is in bloom, she is not going to throw out another spike after this blooming is finished. So anything that is poking out next to another pseudobulb that is a new growth and you can proceed from there my light levels as i mentioned are very very high you can see how yellow my leaves are and if you have noticed any of the drying of my leaves and any kind of blotches and blemishes that is old leaves dying back absorbing everything that that leaf has to offer it's a process that will take approximately three to four months Yes, I've had some real sunburn on the orchid in the past. Now what's happening is just the absorption of old leaves. Thankfully, I have dialed the light levels in so that there is no more sunburn. You can see how light green my leaves are in comparison to other stanhopias and also some leaves are a little bit greener based on those that are facing towards the light as in the early morning sun. I cannot tell you how heady and intoxicating this fragrance is every time I take a breath. <laughs> no, I'm not going to pass out. <laughs> But yes, I can see that this video is very, very long. And there's a reason when you're surrounded by this beauty, by this goodness, it is very easy to keep on talking. Three days of this show and this fragrance once a year, that is all I'm going to get out of her. But she's going to keep me super busy from now on as all the new growths are starting. One thing though I do want to mention, and that is pests. Considering how weird her spikes grow and how a little bit sticky they are with some happy sap, there's absolutely no pest issues that I have seen with my orchid ever. No scale, no mealybugs, no aphids. It's just wonderful. If she wasn't such an XXXXL sized orchid, I would have more Stanhopias. I was hoping to add more to my collection starting with one, get the first one to bloom and then expand on the collection. But yeah, it's not happening. <laughs> I can't do more of this. Actually, I could maybe get one more, but I'm not entirely convinced because if I need to do something and intervene with this orchid, I'm going to need those two hooks on the east side just to accommodate another Stan the Man. <laughs> so I'm going to leave it right here. And the next time we see each other is going to be shortly before the video airs. Today is the 4th of August and this is what she looks like now. Seeing as I'm in southern Spain and I have absolutely no humidity to speak of and at this point in time I am misting all my orchids that are on mounts etc a lot during this time of year just keeping their humidities up as high as possible. I have 30% on average during the warm months of the year. I leave my Stanhopia at this point in time in my blooming alley. I have much better control of keeping her damp and well watered. And if she weren't that huge, this is where she could be living throughout the winter as well. But during the winter, I have her on the stand as mentioned previously, and she has to tolerate temperatures down to five degrees Celsius because this orchid does not come inside. She is far too big. I have no space to accommodate her. It seems as though she's adapted well to those conditions. I don't like it. I'm sure she prefers not to have it that low, but it is what it is. So her temperature lows in my climate are five degrees Celsius. And of course, whatever the summer can throw at her with the exception of no direct sun if it gets really, really hot. And once again, I cannot emphasize it enough as she is in active growth, plenty, plenty of water. If you're still here with me, thank you so very, very much. Considering how short-lived the blooms are of this orchid, this is quite the long video, but there's so much to talk about. I just want to finish off with one remark though. A comment from Robert Forrest that had me in stitches and I love the play on words. I like those kind of word games and his comment to one of my videos when I was showing the spikes on one of my shorts, Robert Forrest left a comment that said, talk about captive blooms and I, oh, 
I love you guys. When I see comments like that, it's just so inspiring. It makes me laugh. You are right. They truly are captivating. And because of the fact that they are so captivating, if you want to have one more last look at them while they were in their prime, enjoy the clip at the end with a little bit of a Spanish classic guitar as the background music. I want to say thank you to the participating channels. Thank you so much to Hillbilly Orchids for being so patient. A care collab flamingo called Spike Watch Alert went out in very, very early days. And we were just waiting, waiting, waiting. Also for Fernanda Nacimento Orchids and Succulents, Spikes to open. Thank you for your patience, Hillbilly Orchids. I really appreciate it a lot. And maybe, hopefully, next year in 2023, Hillbilly Orchids, we're going to be on Spike Watch Alert for all three Stanhopia acidensis. I also really appreciate everybody that stuck to the end, watched the video to the end, and hopefully you enjoy the last beautiful visual of the 2022 blooming of my Stanhopia acidensis. Wishing you a beautiful day, on one condition though, that you do please stay safe. Take care. Bye.